Hello and welcome back to the Green Workbench. Today we're going to build a cap for a fireplace mantle. This is an easy thing to do if you don't want to tear the whole thing apart and you want to change the look of your mantle. Um, the reason that I'm doing a cap instead of tearing it apart is because it is a rental. And I have this really old fashioned drywall painted fireplace mantle that I personally think has no character. So I'm going to create a cap that I can just slide on, tag it down, and then when I leave, if the owner doesn't want it, um, it would be really easy to take off and no one will ever know it's there. So we'll go ahead and get started with that. Alright, so you saw the pictures of the mantle and now you know what I'm talking about. So here we have some slats, just pine. These were from a bed. Um, the bed frame pretty much fell apart, um, so I kept the I kept the pine because they're perfectly good boards. Um, so I'm going to cut the edge off of each board on each side to get rid of the pre-existing hole, uh, and also to square it up. And then I'm going to you see it has a rounded edge. I'm going to run it through the table saw so that I have a straight and true edge. So unless you're using some sort of repurposed or reclaimed lumber like I am, you won't have to go through all those steps. But if you are, I just want to remind you, safety, um, when you're making the same cut over and over and over, sometimes you start to get lax. So remember, you need to be as safe on the first cut as you are on the last. Alright, so I went back and reevaluated my mantle. It's indent more on the top um, than on the bottom. So I've decided that three boards across will do the trick and it'll end up being um, about seven and three quarters on the top. Um, so that's still out about two inches from where it is now. So when you're gluing boards like this together you want to check the grain. So you want to have it go opposite ways. So if you're um, this way on this board you want it going the opposite way in the other board so make sure that those are and that'll help from it pulling apart so make sure that they're the right direction before you mark it and then we're going to go through and mark it for the biscuit joiner and basically they don't have to be the exact same measurements uh, that's the beauty of the biscuit joiner um, you just need to draw a line across both boards and as long as those line up uh, when you cut then the biscuit joints and the biscuits will go together and it'll join together um, just fine. So you may want to mark your board so you know how they go back together um, before you pull it apart to start cutting the biscuits. Once I have all my biscuits cut, I'm going to drill a pocket hole um, for all the end pieces that are going to be butted together um, so that once I have everything glued up and put together I can um, screw in those pocket holes it'll pull everything tight in that direction as well um, so I'll set up my jig and I, I marked which ends I needed to put the pocket hole in and I set up my jig and drill the holes we are ready to glue <clears throat> so we'll run a thin bead And some into the holes there. Roll it out and we'll do that for all of those and clamp it up. Alright, I'm all glued up, so I'm gonna wipe off the excess glue with a damp cloth. And then it's we can move on to the other sides. All right, this is going to be the front face. Uh, so you measure it up depending on what your mantle is. I made it an inch and a half longer so that it um, sticks out three quarters on each side to hide the sides. Um, and then if you want to make it wider as well to hide the, the end on the top, that's up to you. 
how you do your butt joint. Um, but anyway, it's the same principle, basically the same thing, just slightly different measurements. Um, so I am gluing that up now. So the sides, I'm going to go ahead and make those sides. They are going to be um, the exact same length as the top is wide. So I can just go ahead and mark that and cut six pieces uh, for my sides. Three for each side. All right. You can see I've got the sides glued up, um, so I'm going to wipe off the glue there. Now I've got two columns built into this mantle, um, so I, I'm going to go and take the top inside, mark the edges, because I'm going to have to jigsaw those indents out. So I marked off where those columns are, and I'm using a one and a quarter inch drill bit so I Measured in five eighths from the top and from the side. I'm going to start it and then um, finish it off coming in from the bottom. So here we've got one done. We can clean it up with some sandpaper. Um, but that's column one. We'll do the same thing for the other side. Um, and then go check the fit. All right, it fits. So this is my top here, and this is the the front face. Um, so I'm going to. You can go ahead and sand it. Each piece individually, if you want. Um, but then I am going to just basically line up the butt joint, clamp it, glue clamp, and um, throw some brads in there. Um, if you want to, you can do um, biscuit joints or something else. Uh, I think I'll just go with the brads and maybe some dowels, but to start just some just glue and brads and, and that should hold it. As you can see, I've got it all glued up. So everything is done except for the base and we'll fit it on <clears throat> first make sure this the top front and sides fit and then we, we will be decide and figure out how big we need that base because um, we may only need a support you know a small support going across so we're gonna let this dry and set up and then we will slide it onto the mantle and see what it looks like All right, after I've glued it up, I've done the rough fitting on the mantle and it fits. And if you remember at the beginning, I talked about doing um, not just a top, but also a bottom. Um, but the way it fits on the mantle, I don't need to do that. Um, I could just leave it as it is or just do a thin strip to help it from leaning forward. Um, so I think I'm just going to cut that. So. It's about three quarter inch. I'll cut the strip, glue that on at the bottom, um, and then everything will be nice and snug. And then it's ready to sand and stain. Okay, so I put the little lip here on the bottom, so this will rest up against that the bottom of the mantle. Um, and like I said, another option. This is obviously scrap. Another option was to actually to build out underneath the mantle to enclose it fully. But once I put it on, I realized you couldn't really see it anyway uh, and the other limiting factor is because I'm repurposing lumber I only have a limited amount so I actually ended up using all of my boards just perfectly this strip was my last board so now it's time to sand um, I don't want a real polished look I want it to look a little rustic so I'm going to sand it with 60 um, Kind of smooth it out and then 80, but I probably won't go any less than 80. Maybe some 120 on on the edges, um, but I want when I stain it to show some of the scratches and stuff from the sanding. All right, I'm all sanded down, so I'm gonna 
clean up and prep my workspace, I'm going to use this homemade stain. It's made out of vinegar and steel wool. Um, if you want to know more about stains, check out my other video. I have a couple that show examples of different types of homemade stains and a couple of how to make them. So check those out if you're interested. Um, this should turn out like a dark gray. So we'll see how that turns out. I'm going to go ahead and just with a rag wipe that stain on and it takes a little bit for the reaction and it'll stain the wood. There you see the initial reaction. Um, it's a nice brown but it's also wet. You can see and appear along the creases, the cracks, that it's starting to turn gray. Reacts differently on all different types of wood, so you probably want to test it out on a scrap piece first to see if it's what you want. But I'll show you after a little while um, what it looks like and if it's changed. All right, it's been sitting for an hour or so. It has this nice gray tone to it. So I'm going to let that continue to color overnight. It won't change a whole lot from this, but it should get a little bit darker. And then tomorrow we'll uh, put some finish on it. Alright, sorry for the high school football noises. But I'm finishing it with some spray varnish. I was going to use an oil, but I had this so I decided to use it anyway. It's a all right, so the finish is dried, and here is our final product. The finish darkened it up a little bit. So we took a boring old drywall mantle. I made something custom, all out of repurposed wood. Um, so really the only thing with the repurposed wood, the homemade stain, the only thing that uh, you'd have to buy if you don't have it already is the finish. Um, let me know what you think in the co comments. Uh, please subscribe to my channel, check out my other videos, and I will see you next time on the Green Workbench.